Hey guys, I've been getting a lot of questions recently about interviews and how to succeed in them. So I decided to make a video talking about my experiences and hopefully you guys can gain some valuable insights from them. Also, if you managed to get to this stage, congratulations, you are among the top 25% of the candidates who applied for that position. If you have not yet reached this stage, feel free to check out some of my other videos that will help you get here. The secret to a successful interview is providing value. You want to make yourself seem so valuable that it would be stupid for them to say no. I learned this from a book called 100 Million Offers by Alex Hormozzi. So without further ado, this is how you ace your interviews. The first step is to understand the question. A lot of times, the questions they ask during the interviews have hidden meanings. For example, when they ask you to tell me about yourself, what they really mean is tell me the skills you have that will make you a good fit for this job. When they ask questions like why did you pick us or why did you choose our company, what they really mean is what values do you have that align with our company's values. I recommend crafting your answers to be coherent, interesting, and to use keywords to answer these hidden questions. For example, I would answer the second question as follows. I really appreciated the transparency aspect of your company. I see that you guys have continuously applied that aspect in all your work, which resonates with me heavily. I myself value transparency in a work environment, which is why I believe we will be a good fit. The next step is to do your research. Just like studying for a test, doing well in an interview involves doing good research. You really want to channel your inner journalist and dig deep when you're doing research. You may want to research the company, research the industry, research the interviewer or the recruiter. Basically, you want to be able to uncover the problems that the company is currently facing, and you want to be able to come up or propose solutions to those problems. Even if those solutions don't work, the interviewer will most likely appreciate the time and trouble you took to find those solutions. I recommend using tools like LinkedIn, Instagram, and Twitter or Facebook when you're researching companies and interviewers. These tools give you a lot of useful information which you can use during this process. I found that using AI was very helpful too. I used ChatGPT to narrow down my search selection when I was doing research for companies or interviewers specifically. I found that ChatGPT was able to filter out the noise and focus on interesting topics that I would like and that I could bring up during my interview. I used simple prompts to gain a general overview about the company and then I niched it down later when I was doing individual research. The more useful information you can find, the better. This was, in my opinion, one of the biggest reasons behind my interview success. The next step is to think out loud. If you're hit with a problem solving question, I recommend thinking out loud so the interviewer can better understand your thought process. With this, they're able to better understand you and decide if you're a good fit for this position. Even if you eventually get stuck, knowing that you can effectively communicate your problems, they might be keen to hire you because effective communication is a valuable skill. Another tip I have is to pause when you speak. This is so you can minimize the ums and ahs in your speech. This shows that you're able to gather and organize your thoughts so you can form more intentional sentences. It makes you seem more professional and put together. The next step is to stand out. One way to stand out is by asking good questions. Obviously, with every interview, you want to maximize the time you have by asking questions. At the very least, you can get some value from the interview solely by the act of asking questions. Some questions worth asking include, what would your ideal candidate look like? Or what is the problem that the company is facing right now? I like to ask more individualized or personal questions, so I recommend using that research you did before to dig deep and ask those questions. This immediately makes you stand out, and depending on how good your research is, this could land you a job. I talked more about this in my other video on how I landed eight offers in three months. Another good way to stand out is by showcasing your skills through a portfolio. With a portfolio, you're able to showcase your skills based on past work live so that your employers can see. This can also be used as a basis for interview questions. It levels the playing field so you don't have to feel so nervous and can use your past experience to answer these questions. It also allows interviewers or employers to validate your skills based on your resume, and this increases your perceived value to them. I made a couple of videos talking about how to create a winning portfolio and how to make that portfolio in under 10 minutes, so feel free to check that out. I'll leave a link below the like button. The best way to stand out, in my opinion, is to talk about your unfair advantages. I learned this from the book Unfair Advantages. I will leave an Amazon associate link down below if you guys wanna check it out. Basically, everyone has unfair advantages but how you use it is what matters. For example, if you're an international student, you probably speak more than one language, and being bilingual is a highly valuable skill. One of my unfair advantages is that I used to play soccer professional. This means that I have years of experience working with others. This is highly valuable to companies because it shows that I'm a team player and that I can work well with others. If you want to go even further, you can talk about your unique advantage. For example, I have a friend who's in the field of data, but has years of experience as a psychologist. This gives him so much leverage as he's able to communicate his insights even better, know his audience, and also has specific domain knowledge that not many people have. And obviously, see companies value that. Now, when it comes to technical questions, the only way to truly master this is true practice. If you're in the field of data, some common technical questions include ERDs, merges, joins, or transforming data, transposing data, etc. Or if you're interviewing for an AI or machine learning role, you might be asked about machine learning algorithm cases and usage, memory, efficiency, etc. You might also be required to do some SQL or Python code, so please feel free to brush up your programming knowledge. If you're looking for a software engineering position, a good resource is LeapCode. Most big companies reference their questions directly from LeapCode, 
code. So it might be valuable for you to spend a good amount of time there practicing so that you can do better in your technical questions. When it comes to interviews for internship positions, depending on the position and company size, there might not be too many technical questions as they usually want to find someone whose characters and values align with that of the company. So don't be too stressed if you are just looking for an internship. My last tip is to take that extra 10 minutes to dress professionally and respectfully. Regardless of what the interview is for, unless it's a special circumstance, it's almost always better to dress professionally. There's a lot of statistics to back this up. I'll leave some links in the description below. Feel free to check those out to be more informed. Anyway, that's all I have for now. Again, if you managed to get this far in your job application process, I want to wish you congratulations. You're just one step closer to getting that job. Feel free to leave a comment down below so we can celebrate your success. Remember to always be yourself and stay resilient. This is a long and hard process, but it's also a very rewarding process. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.